Hey guys, it's Avangel. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking a look at a very different add-on for the sim. Now, it's not the airplane, it's not the airport. This is Orbex's Bella Bella, uh, Bella Bella? No, Bella Cooler. Sorry, wrong one. And this is Carinata's C-170B. Now, neither of these are what I'm talking about today. In fact, we're going to be going flying first to get there. But we're talking about Parallel 42's new release. Now, of course, those who have the Kit Fox know it has the wonderful tent and other features that come with it. And I love fluff and utility when it comes to my sim experience because it lets me have that little bit of life to my world. They've released an add-on that allows you to camp anywhere. And it's not a scenery, it's dynamic. It's a feature that allows you to literally get to a place, unpack a tent, a campfire, some chairs, some bits and pieces, and actually role play in your world. It's a bit like, to me, and I'll just go straight into the aircraft here because there's no point just faffing around. In fact, I'm going to get started here. It is basically the same sort of thing that we get from an aircraft that allows us to open the windows or open the doors. Is it necessary for a flight sim? No. But I think it adds a lot to the world we live in. I think it makes a big difference, personally. Uh, that is not what I wanted. Map, that's what we wanted there. Okay, let's make sure everything is good to rock here. We're going to go for a little short run up the valley, not too far away. And if you want to skip forwards, uh, I will put a timestamp in for where we start playing with the utility. But it'll be like a five minute flight. We shouldn't be too far at all. There we go. Okay, clear prop. Okay, we have our engine. Close my window here. Now, what this is, is basically a dynamic placement system. And it allows you to create and set stuff on the fly, based on where you are. Or you could even save a custom camping loadout per aircraft. And yeah, this is her aircraft. Any aircraft can do this. It's not limited to just their aircraft. It's not limited to just particular types. You could land a 747 in the desert and you could set a camp. You could put probably a couple of hundred tents out. That'd be crazy, but that'd be one hell of an off airport party, would it not? Okay, so we're going to get ourselves on the runway here at Bella Cooler and we're going to head back up the valley the way we're actually flying away from now from departure. Good old Asobo Tail Dragon physics always going to make things a little bit interesting. Thankfully the 170 has so little power that it's almost irrelevant to get any P-Factor issues. So we're going to climb away here and we're going to turn around and head up the valley and we're going to find a nice pretty little spot off airport. We're going to land and we're going to have a good little time with it and we're going to play with that utility and try out how it works. Now there is object persistence so you could realistically go back to a camp you've placed and you can remove things from that camp. You can add things, you can quick manage items and it's all controlled from up here on the toolbar. Very useful way of adding apps to the sim. Now there is an eco credit system to manage in sim littering so you can actually remove things from a distance obviously if you want to pull them apart and you've got a dozen plus objects you can actually place with different color variations to suit the user including things that are reactive to the wind like tents, portable wind socks, smoke canisters and there are military hunting and festival type additional themed objects as well that will be released. They haven't been yet. There are sounds, there are sound effects, campfires, there's even lighting. Now this is apparently going to be, it's $20 now, or £20 in the marketplace for you Brits, and it will go up when they first themed object packs release with it, so I believe you'll get those packs if you already buy it now, but it, the price will be higher when it comes out. Now this is the price of an aircraft, is it worth it? Well, that entirely depends on you and what you want to get out of your sim. For me, it's the immersion. For people who enjoy bush flying and flying in the wilds of the world, it adds a really cool little experience, I think, that adds to enjoyment of the sim and how one would feel about things. So we are going to get ourselves up here a little bit, a little bit away from the beaten track, and find a spot, probably along the river somewhere, and we're going to sit down and we're going to find ourselves a spot. So should be just up here towards the fork in the valleys and we should have some room in fact there's a nice little beach down there ahead of us for the sake of expediency I will forgo 
uh, a recon, recon even, pass. I was about to say reconnaissance, so I said recon. I'll forgo the recon pass, and I'm just going to bring her in here. So let's get ourselves a bit of a slip to lose some altitude and air. So people got looking at that, I think, should be viable. Let's get some flaps in here. Okay, that's got us a little bit more stable, a little bit more slow. Lost some of the altitude, so we should be on a good descent in here. I have to curve it around at the last moment to drop her in, but it shouldn't be a problem. That's more just because my current angle isn't perfect. We'll line that up and we'll put her in here and we'll take a look at what this can offer us. Now it's optimized to work with controllers as well, which is really useful and it'll be really cool to actually play with in that regard. And again, I really like this, that it's something different. We get so many things in this sim that are expected that we've had in previous sims. And this kind of dynamic placement and utility is not something we've had in previous sims. And it adds potential for other object use, whether that be in kind of a game where you, or game mode, I should say, like uh, we had with the cargo and career mode options. Now we have the ability to actually have more interaction with this world in a more live dynamic regard. Let's encourage her down a little bit more here. A little bit high up still. And that's way... Okay, this is elevation memory with the sim, so this will clearly not work. Yeah, I don't think we're landing on that, because that's just a rock face. Thank you, Sobo, for... I can't wait for the Canada update. I really can't. Okay, we'll just pick somewhere over here that's not quite as derped, and we should be fine. In fact, what's that over there? Why did I pick the entire area that's gone derpy? Perfect. You'll do. You'll do. You'll do nicely. There we go. Come on, nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. Oh, there we go. Drop the tail back. This is perfect, I think, don't you? Yeah, just perfect. Okay. Let's cut the engine there. We'll turn my head off for this because I can see it's going to probably be a bit of an interesting one. Um, just for a little atmosphere, let's have the door open there. That'll pop both doors open. Why not? And to please those of you who don't like me using the keypad, we'll use the controller. So we're going to go external here. And I'm going to fly around with my controller. Now, we go to our utility at the top here and we click on the camp out menu. Now we can save things. We can, what does this do? This is exporting to other people for location so you can give it to your friends. Uh, this is creating our own sets and lists. And here is how we get objects. Now we can zoom out now. We've got 102 eco credits. Okay. So we can clear all objects worldwide. We can purge some individual ones. Information here on how to use various things, what they mean. So let's go back to the actual placement menu. Now, I think I'm going to want a tent first and foremost, don't you? In fact, no. Let's get a... That's an orange tent. That's a green tent. No, nope, we don't want you. Is that red? We'll go for a red tent. Now, I'm going to place that here. So that is right there. Now, we can drag with the handle and position our tent where we want it to be. Now, it's a bit far away, so let's put this here. Okay, that works. Now, let's add a campfire. Why not, huh? Now, that should be right in front of our little tent. And, hmm. Oh, a grill? Yeah, I think a grill is necessary here. Position this a little bit better. 
Now, a mouse is ideal for this sort of thing, but I want to know how well this works when it comes to controller. How would I control this on the controller? Okay, that's just my camera still. I don't know. Yeah, I'm struggling to work out how I'd use that with the controller, but obviously I've got the camera for that, so... We can zoom in. We can place things more accurately if we want to. Now let's add... Uh, hmm. We need a cooler for our drinks, obviously. So we'll put the cooler here. There's the cooler. And we will add a chair. And we'll have to turn that around. We'll get another camp chair out. Because you don't want to go camping alone, do you? You're definitely not drinking on a sandbar on your own. That would be boring. So we'll get another chair. We'll place that by this one. Turn that around. That's cool. I like that. Now, oh wait, we could even leave our shoes outside the tent. Good pair of Vans. I also wear Vans, so good call there. And what else do we have? We have water bottles. There's every kind of nice little utility you can think of. Now, I'm going to deliberately place a couple of ones that should have light effects to them. So we have a lamp there, which I'm going to place over here by the plane on purpose because I want to see if the light splashes are different and not a smoke canister but useful if you want to see what the wind direction is going to be doing we'll pop a little pile of wood over there so we've chopped up some wood from the trees nearby to go and set our fire with and last but not least we'll get a little windsock out here which we'll place over there so we can determine what the wind's going to be doing so we'll close that and for the time being, we'll take a little look around what we've got. So, these are not bad quality items. In fact, I'd say they're very good quality. Those burgers actually look rather tasty. As the veg. Mmm. Really nice detail here, actually. Not that it's a big deal, obviously. This is just an add-on feature that's kind of cool, but... Imagine if we could be people in this world now after we've landed our airplane. Got our bag, got a radio torch in there. Now the one thing I do need to quickly correct is I forget where the functionality in this bird was regarding the pilots because the one thing that annoys me still is uh, older Carinado planes still have Grumpa and uh, Grumpa Jr. in there so let's get rid of them for a second because we're on the ground here. So this is why I like things like static elements. They are to me important part of flying. It's relevant. It's important. It's something that actually adds to our experience as I can never remember how to make you go away. There we go. Let's go back outside here. Now let's turn into night time here real quick and take a look at what this looks like in the evening. Because I think that will be quite important for us. Oh. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now there's no dancing flames, which I'm a little disappointed by. There is a fiery glow, like it's still just crackling with the embers, but I could sit here and just, I mean, I, I paint miniatures, it's one of my hobbies, and I could sit here at my computer, just with my camera set like this, or even, look at that view, we've got our plane, we've got our little camp, we have the beautiful sunset over the mountains and the river. And we just chose to land here on this sandbar. We can pack everything up and we can head home in the morning. Right. The little lamp I placed over here works. Hell, theoretically you could maybe mark a little runway out of lamps. Or at least some landing markers at least. How visible they'd be from a distance, I don't know. It's relatively visible actually, the little white light next to the aircraft. Okay, my actual aircraft lights are still turned on, which I don't need to correct, but... Yeah, okay, so the dancing flames, the sounds are gorgeous. I would like to have had flames, though. Perhaps one little criticism. Let's make it daytime again so we can really work with this. But let's see what else we've got in here feature-wise. Okay, so I have a set here. Now, create my first set. Okay, so this is my first set assigned to the Carinada 170B Tundra. 76 points there, so I'm going to save this and place uh, the contents of this set with the current objects. Yes! 
I would like to save that. Now I need to make sure that I will delete that if it comes to that point. So this would pack it up. And I can press it again and unpack it all. And it sets my custom camp up exactly where I am here. Or wherever it would be around the aircraft. So if you can save a set, you can save your custom equipment you have with you. Your choice of tent colour, your seats, the equipment you might bring with you. You can have that set up and ready. And think of the immersion this adds to flying. This adds to our world. It's such a pretty universe we have to fly in. That's neat. I think neat's the best way I can describe it. Because it's not something that's dramatically exciting or a huge new aircraft add-on. But I think, to me, flight simming is about immersion. And it's about the experience we have. The fact that I can add these things and have a set of equipment with me in any aircraft. Not just ones that support it as a feature, but any aircraft now. I can land on a remote strip somewhere and I can camp till morning, aka when I next log in. I can have that stuff set up, I can pack it away, and I can take off my next destination. That's kind of cool. And considering we'll have, should we say, those themed sets including festival stuff, hunting... As I throw things around my office, and I sound really distant for a second, and military means you can roleplay a lot more missions and flight parameters that you would, might want to do. And as far as I know, this stuff will stay here till I clean it up, so I could come back to this location and my camp. So wonderful, right? Like I said, not a crazy huge add-on, not an aircraft, and it is expensive. $20, 20 pounds or so. But to me, this is like something like FS Realistic or Head Tracking. It's one of those luxurious necessities that once you have it, you really love having it and you'll use it. Versus not having it and not really missing it because you haven't experienced it yet. Obviously, if an aircraft like the Parallel 42 Kit Fox, wonderful. But this is off airport flying. This is bush flying. Landing on a strip in the middle of nowhere and setting up camp. I love it. I think this is cool. Is it important? No. Is it super relevant? No. Is it pretty darn epic? And makes even a Carinado plane suddenly feature rich and interesting and worth popping out here into the middle of nowhere to fly with? Yeah. Definitely. Really good work, Parallel 42. That's some lateral thinking when it comes to flight sim add-ons. And I hope to see more along this vein. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye.